So today I'm really excited about this project. Now this is a really brought down version of what I had originally wanted to do. But I have my beloved palettes here. My original thought was I wanted to make an entire fence for our garden out of palettes. However, with the size our garden is going to turn out to be, and palettes aren't Mr. Blue Jean's favorite. So I was willing to compromise, give up my palette dreams, just because they're so hard to find anymore, and, and bring it down to a smaller scale. In Wisconsin, we had had a, an 1800s farmhouse that we rented, and it had a really cool deck, but the, uh, the, the, the baluster on it was sort of broken. So I took pallets, attached it to that so that the dogs wouldn't get through, and I planted strawberries in it, and they came up great. So I decided with our smaller, our, our first raised beds that we had made, I would put pallets at the end of them and try strawberries again. So I just wanted to show you how quick and easy this is. It's totally something you can do. Uh, if you haven't seen what Sam and I did last year with our um, hay glue and using pallets, I'll leave a link below so you can see how we lag bolted the pallets together and made a base to make a really nice area to store our hay and our straw. But for now, this is really a fun little thing and I'm gonna um, show you, I'm just using some deck screws and I'm gonna put them in here, screw them. These are our wood pallets, not our metal ones. Screw them to the, um, I'm sorry, these are our wood uh, raised beds, not the metal ones. So I'm gonna screw them onto here so that they don't topple over because we have a lot of toppling here with the winds. bags that I never get rid of. I'm telling you, if you get feed bags, keep them. And if you have somebody like Gigi who cuts all the bottoms off and cleans them up for you, that's a bonus. But I take our, our feed bags and then I use that, if you look over here, as our liner. I had just a little bit of um, landscape fabric left, but not enough to do all of these. So I just switched to the feed bags to make the holder for the dirt. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this to size. Then we'll come back and I'll show you how I drape it in and staple it in. Then we'll fill it with dirt and we'll talk about the strawberries that I'll be planting next. So I just go ahead and staple on one side. Then I put the fabric in and make my trough. Then I just come to the other side and cut it. Super simple. Grab my stapler and staple off this side. Now we're ready to fill with dirt. It's time for the dirt. It's just a typical mixture we have of top or uh, some topsoil and our compost. So it's gonna be a lot easier without the trowel. I'm just gonna use my hands. So just fill it in. So I put that in. Now, if you guys come over here and take a peek, you'll see I planted Strawberry strawberries, you know, the kind that when you see them, you know what they are. Well, I didn't have enough for all of the planters. I, I'm putting up four of these this year. Uh, so I went back to the store, ready to buy some more strawberries, and they were completely out. However, one store had these, which I have never even seen before, but there's 10 in a package for $6.00. And it was all I had available. So I thought, okay, let's give this a try. Now I've never never planted these, I've never seen these, so I guess we'll do this together. Sam, why don't you come in here and we'll, we'll dump it out and see what we've got. Oh, there's dirt. I'm not quite sure what to look for. Not quite sure what to look for. I may end up having to just plant this dirt. I don't understand where there's st strawberry plants. All right, you guys. I don't... Okay, I think this is something right here. Now, how it says that there's... Maybe there's just great value, 10 plants right there. I think I see one. So, 
Uh, I'm going to plant it, <laughs> but I'm not seeing 10 of anything in here, let alone really understanding what this is. So I'm going to just put this here. <laughs> see, we're going we're gonna to keep an eye and see what this thing does, because I um, don't think I'm going to go down this road again. I don't see... Unless this little ball is supposed to be something. We're going to put this in too. Okay, there we go. And we'll just take the rest of this and put this over here. So, I probably won't do this again. <laughs> because this is crazy. If anybody has had any luck with these or has planted them or, or knows what to look for when you open the bag, uh, shoot me a comment. Because uh, right now, this is nothing I would ever purchase again. So I'm going to go for the live strawberries instead. But I'm going to go ahead and keep getting these planters done. Uh, I have to make a run to a garden store tomorrow. So I'm going to see if maybe they have the strawberries that I'm looking for. And uh, get this planter done. So we'll follow up when it's all planted. And I'll show you what it looks like. And we'll see. We'll keep an eye on this planter and see if anything happens with it throughout this, uh, this growing season. See you soon when things are planted and done. Well, I took back that weird bagged bag of dirt, really, <laughs> because I didn't feel that whatever was supposed to be in there was really in there. And uh, it turns out it wasn't. Uh, it looks like somebody bought the box of strawberries and took them and returned them. So that is that is unfortunate. Uh, so I took it back, got my money back. Tractor Supply was great about just going ahead and refunding me right away, no problem. So I've kind of changed things up since I started at the first planter. Um, one cool thing about homesteading, or a lot of things in life really, is that you sort of work not only with what you have, but with what you have. I always look at something and, and wonder if I can do it better, less expensively, sometimes even quicker, although quicker doesn't always win. <laughs> quicker does not always win. But in this case, I decided to try shorter bags, and, and longer bags. Obviously, um, common sense tells you that more dirt equals healthier strawberries that will last longer. On the other hand, shorter bags mean I have to haul in less dirt and do less work and um, less, I don't use fertilizer, but less compost down the road. To do. So I'm, I'm trying it both ways, but to, just to show you the process of what I'm doing, I take our feed bags, um, they have like a natural area where you can tear them open. So I get a full length. Okay. And then um, it's, it's a great size. I just cut them right in half. And uh, what that'll do for the pallets is sort of leave a little extra on the side that I try to turn into a pocket to help save some of the soil from going all the way down. I also grabbed some duct tape because we have some and am putting a little bit, not uh, not the whole way, because A, it's hard to reach your hand in these corners, and B, I wanted some ability for, for water to, to seep out. I don't, we have some pretty heavy rain showers here, and I don't want to waterlog the strawberries either. It's sort of a delicate balance as far as I'm concerned. In the past, I've mostly killed strawberries due to underwatering. <laughs> Um, but now we're in a place where there's a lot of water and I don't want them overwatered. I really, I really want this to be successful. And in time, I'm hoping I can overwinter these, probably against all odds, but I'm thinking of putting burlap over the pallets in the winter time. And I'd like to take from these and start something further out when we get further out. Well, I was lucky enough at our local co-op to find one more flat of strawberries. Actually, Mr. Blue Jeans is the one who said we should take a peek, and there they were at the very end, kind of hidden, just waiting for me. It was a flat of six. They were all Ozark uh, beauties except for Quinault. I have planted both of those before, so that's really cool. So now I have three types. I have All Star and the other two. So a couple of different ways I'm going about planting these. Um, obviously, putting them in. Um, but there are two ways that you can go ahead and try to get more strawberries. One is by using the runner here. And my thought is just let it run down to the next empty bed that's 
doesn't have a strawberry or doesn't have enough strawberry, this one's got a runner. So I, because this is a little bit of a smaller plant, I'm just gonna kind of pop this runner here, put a little dirt around it, and let that little baby take root right there in the same pot. Some people cut the runners once they get big enough and, and root them. Uh, but in this case, since I'm keeping them all in the same place and they can sort of drop down to the next level below, I'm gonna do that for now. If I get really good with strawberries, I would love to be able to cut some of these runners and then transplant further out into a garden patch area where I would like to hope that they would just sort of take over an area and be there. Because my friend Serena, when I was at her house the other day, has had exactly that happen. She overwintered them and they came back just fine with her doing nothing to it. It's the forget about it gardening technique that I'm really happy with. <laughs> if I can forget about it, I can do it. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's really all that's going on today is getting the rest of these strawberries in. Hopefully we have enough for maybe a little bottle of strawberry jam. I don't know. The plan would be maybe in the future some mixed berries at least. We have plans for a berry patch. Mr. Blue Jeans, how big is that berry patch? 80 by 80? About 80 by 80. We've already staked it out and started doing some fencing but decided that that wasn't our priority, that the food and vegetables was, was more of a priority, so we, we were holding off on that. So here we are in the garden, getting the strawberries going. I wanna give you a tour soon and show you what's in, what didn't make it, and what's next. So from Five Dog Farm, this is Nikki D. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>